Hey everyone, Nomadic Aizen here. On the first part of my journey to the sand dunes of Totori, I got to explore one of Japan's top three beautiful sites located in Kyoto. This is Amanohashi Date. My first stop before heading to Kyoto was in Aichi Prefecture, a small historic town. Japan had a coastal route with a series of 53 government stations known as the Tokaido Goju San Tsugi. People traveled these roads for hundreds of years, making stops along the way and heading towards major cities. Stop 31 was a place called Fujikawa Shuku. Here's what it looked like in the 1830s. Fast forward to 2021 and the place has changed quite a bit. With a train station, plenty of parking, a 24-hour convenience store, restaurant, and shops, it's an easy place to enjoy a stop along your travels. You can't help but feel refreshed and relaxed after a night in this place. So I decided to hit the drive straight to the coast of Kyoto, passing through long stretches of highway, industrial areas, a super windy bridge, some kind of roller coaster island, mountains, and finally the Sea of Japan. One of Japan's top three beautiful sites, this is an absolute must see place. Located in Miyazu Bay, it's a three kilometer or roughly two mile sandbar that was formed naturally. An inspiration for artwork throughout Japanese history, I can really understand why this place is so highly regarded. It's the first time I've seen a parking lot completely on the honor system. There you go. Not much was open for some reason. But everywhere you looked, you could find rental bikes. If you come to this place, you definitely have to try that. And another first for me was here, this uh, turning bridge, Shoten Kyo. It actually turns to let boats through because it's too low. It feels like just a normal bridge when it's not turned. There's a souvenir shop with snacks and bicycle rentals right after you cross the bridge. The map lays out so many little sites. Some are unique trees that have been named and there's a beautiful shrine right in the middle. If you prefer to skip all this and go to the other side, there's a 12 minute ferry you can take as well. There was a side path I took to an extremely creepy faceless statue. You gotta cross one more beautiful bridge. This one I'm 99% sure doesn't turn, but you never know. And crossing this bridge will put you on the actual main sandbar that makes this place famous. It honestly felt like some kind of private beach resort. There weren't many people around and just nothing but stunning sights. After a short walk from the beach, there's a cute little tea house and this nice lady was working there. So I wanted to rent a bike and it was 100 yen for an hour or 200 yen for two hours.
The entire sandbar has a path running through it that's very easy to walk or bike on and it has stunning views all along the way. There were proper restroom facilities, places to sit down, even some random houses, but this place is so accessible for families and older people. Amanohashi Date Shrine grabbed my attention right away. It has a super old vibe to it, dedicated to dragons and located next to the famous Iso Shimizu Spring. This place was amazing. A clean nomad makes for happy dragon gods. Thanks, nomadic geisha. It felt so great biking through a historic and beautiful spot like this. There were plenty of places to stop and take a rest or get a nice view. Places like this rest area. This was something I hadn't really seen before. Reaching the other end of the coast was a nice little beach town. Had a completely different vibe than the other side. Motoise Kono Shrine is right in front of the station that takes you up the mountain, so it's definitely worth passing through. All these things on the side covered in plastic, like grandma's couch. The entrance is pretty nice too. This was a fun little surprise, a turtle type shrine that was actually filled with turtles. The walk up had a typical sort of touristy town vibe to it. As super, super old buildings here. I think this place has been around for a while. No jumping, gotcha. No jump. I'm on the chairlift right now because, yeah, they had the, uh, for the same price, you could take the chairlift or the cable car up and down. I had to wait like another 10 minutes for the cable car. It runs it every 15 minutes. Scoop do 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 do. I like the view here because it's not the standard view that everybody sees of this place. Uh, from this angle, it looks like it's just a row of trees going across the bay. You don't see the sand at all. So here we are. This is uh, one of Japan's three top like, beautiful sites. I didn't even know about it until like a couple days ago, but here I am. <laughs> And the hardest thing to believe for me is that this is Kyoto. Everyone imagines Kyoto as sort of temples, shrines, you know, all that kind of stuff. No one imagines, you know, beach. They had these clay discs you could buy. It was all in the trust system again. You put some money in, you just grab a stack. Anyways, you throw these and you make a wish. Try to get it through that hole. I did not do so well. <laughs> If you look all the way across the bay, you can see a line going up the mountain. That's where the more famous viewpoint is, and that's where we're heading next.
This is uh, time number three running a chairlift today. I'll be on a number four when I come down. <laughs> This was the view from pictures I'd seen before. This was exactly what I was looking for. There were little platforms to bend over and look between your legs and get an image of a dragon flying through the sky. It was also like an amusement park for kids. There was a train and various other little things that kids could use, but also a nice date spot. They had constructed some kind of walkway so you can get various views of the place and also it can handle a lot of people. That was a really smart idea actually. This is a great view just for photos, but if you want something with family members, friends, or as a couple, they got a little photo booth spot right here. That's perfect. And that's it for part one of my journey to Tottori. If you have a chance, definitely visit Amonohashidate sometime as there are still so many historic spots and cool sites I didn't get to show you here. Make sure to check out part two of my journey as well as I venture to the sand dunes and find interesting things along the way. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. It's always appreciated. See you next time in Tottori.